your illusionary perspective of sufficiency your illusionary perspective of sufficiency cannot sustain you when you are under pressure your insufficiency is revealed under pressure now someone might look okay until there's pressure when there's pressure the kind of pressure that you don't have the capacity to manage it's an illustration of your insufficiency are you with me pressure to pay your house rent pressure from your family to get married all kinds of pressure and when this pressure begins to find expression then you begin to see how that you are insufficient meanwhile god designed us to be what insufficient by his own wisdom because god intended that he would be our sufficiency and that's why the scripture says that the spirit of god helps our infirmities so god is aware that we have infirmities we have limitations and he created us like that so that we'll be utterly dependent on him hallelujah um the natural man has three areas of urgent need with respect to his insufficiency hallelujah if you check the story of noah are you still with me stay with me if you check the story of noah you will see the kind of prayer that noah prayed after he came out of the ark that that prayer that noah prayed when he came out of the ark will give us a, a fair understanding of one of the major challenges of insufficiency all right can we check noah maybe we'll see a few urgent limitations we, the bible says we have infirmities but there are several infirmities that need urgent attention there are three such infirmities that need urgent attention if not our delicate balance is likely to be compromised in the book of genesis chapter 20 chapter 8 turn quickly genesis 8 are you still with me genesis 8 just build together with me uh, as god helped us in genesis chapter 8 verse 20 20 okay let's start from 20 and noah builded an altar unto the lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar and the Lord smelled the sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cause the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. Then you know verse 22. While there yet remains, seed time and harvest. Huh? Okay, you know that. Now, this guy just came out of the ark, the ark of preservation. And what God did was that he unleashed his vengeance on the entire creation. Now, you see, that, uh, that scenario actually reveals some possibilities. The first possibility is that God if it de destroyed the world before it can destroy the world again meanwhile as a human being what what profit is there for you to invest in a world that you know that god will come and destroy noah had a limitation and the limitation he had was that he seemed to have no control over the future are you saying that because if God could come and destroy everything, what stops him from coming tomorrow to destroy everything? So he had no control over the future. His intercession 
And the reason for which he had to raise an altar to God and to sacrifice to God was in view of that limitation. He would like to have control over his future. And so he sacrificed. If you notice the kind of creatures he sacrificed, he sacrificed clean creatures. What's the implication of that? I was showing my wife something. Um, is it? Geese. Geese. You know, you know, not ducks, but geese, those white ones. Hmm? Um, a male geese and a female geese, when they get together, they actually marry the way we know marriage. And that male geese is committed only to that female geese. All through his life. In fact, when, the, when in any of the partners die, the other one will die of heart attack. I was just showing my wife. You see, I, oh, heartbreak. It's a heartbreak. Sorry. Heartbreak. The other one will die of heartbreak. I, 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 I see why it is hard that. Because I'm aware she had one heartbreak before. Jesus. Now. This creature, this creature, the reason why the creature behaves like that is because the fall that affected all creation did not affect that creature. So, clean creatures were creatures that the fall did not affect. You see, unclean creatures were creatures that the fall affected their manual, the way they were designed by God to operate. Everything in creation was supposed to illustrate God or his purposes, his agenda, his glory, his plans. Are you with me? Aha. So what the fall did is that the fall made creation not to reflect God's intent. Because the manual that was supposed to regulate the physical creation was withdrawn upon the violation of Adam in Eden. Are you with me? For instance, you might go to town and find out and see a conductor calling people to join a bus. And if God opens your eyes to see his original purpose, maybe by God he was designed to be an evangelist. But he is a conductor. It's the fall that is responsible for that situation. If not for the fall, he would have leaped directly into his purpose. But it became something that was contrary to what God ordained because of the fall of man. And what is it about the fall of man? Man decided to declare independence from God. And unfortunately for man, man was designed to be a dependent creature. And so God created him in his image. God created him in his likeness. God created him to function like him. There was no other option for man. Man was going to function like God or nothing else. But you see, when man declared independence against God, the implication was that man was disconnected from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, that disconnection is what made the conductor's situation the way it is. That his current life is a disparity from what? God's intent. So the, the creatures that were not affected by what do they call that thing in in biology? When there is a change in the cellular mutation, 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 the creatures that were not affected by the mutation are called the clean creatures. And if you check the description of creatures that According to the law of Moses that come into that category, you find out uh, they, had, they have some characteristics. And those creatures retain their original ordination as designed by God. So the fall did not affect them. And even if it did, it affected them just little. They maintained the major substance of their manual. Now, so Noah went and took some of those creatures and offered sacrifices. 
what he was saying was that, see, we, we realize, because Noah housed all the creatures. He lived with them for a while. He saw the way they operated. He knew that there was something different about And meanwhile, this clean creature classification that Noah was subscribing to, eh, he, was, he was doing that before Moses came to do the classification, the taxonomy according to God's wisdom. So there must be an inspiration with which Noah did what he did. And his selection for creatures for sacrifice came from his understanding of what clean creatures were, which I believe was a function of inspiration. When he took those creatures and sacrificed, what he was saying in his intercession was that God as the fall did not affect these creatures. You know, the fall came and went, and they still maintained their manual. Can you, just like you make this, made these creatures to have immunity from the effect of the fall, can you give us constants in our dealings such that our future will be predictable? Because he was doing all of this sacrificing in order for him to have control of the future. Are you, are you here? No. Stay with me. I'm going far. Alright, so God, in response to his prayer, now said, okay, I see what you're saying. I'm going to hold some things constant. As long as the earth remains. First constant is what? Seed time and what? It will not, you do not see. If you, if you have strength enough to sow, then there will be a time for you to reap. It's predictable. I don't want to press further, but you get the sense I'm trying to establish here. The first burden we see on the heart of Noah is for him to be able to have control over what? The future. It means that in our state of infirmity, we do not have any means by which we can control the future. That's part of our infirmities. And these three reasons, these three major emergencies I'm going to show you, that is open to humankind, are the three basic reasons why human beings decide to partner with demons. So we see in Noah's case, what's, what's the... What's the challenge? He wants control of the future. Can we do First Samuel chapter 30? First Samuel 30, quick. Hallelujah. Is anybody here, you prayed on a particular subject and it was as if the prayer was not coming to pass, you were frustrated at a point. For those of you, it has never happened to you have not lived long enough. <laughs> you are. <laughs> God, in order for him to be God indeed, will make it evidently clear to you that he's the only one that controls the future. The best you can do is to partner with him. And if you so do, you have to also submit to his own program of timing and his own calendar of sequencing. Are you there now? First Samuel chapter what? 30. Let me show you another thing. We, we, we are going far. We don't just want to lay the foundation. Um, can you give me verse 8? 30 verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? Those are two things. He asked two questions, but God answered three questions. He said, Shall I pursue? After this troop, shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake. And without fail, recover. David did not ask for recovery. 
He didn't ask for recovery. He just said, Shall I pursue them? Do I have your clearance to do this first one? Business? Alright? Because of our insufficiency in the area of knowledge, huh? we are sentenced to a life of consulting God. Now, many people do not like how um, humbling it is to always go to God <laughs> to, to help us with some strategic knowledge that will enhance our destiny, our productivity, and our possibility. Hallelujah. So, David says, do I have your clearance to pursue? I'm seeing them. And then the second question, the first question is a knowledge question. It's a knowledge. You, oh God, know the future. I don't know the future. So in your own knowledge and from your own perspective, is it safe for me to pursue? Because I know that some kind of, of pursuing games like this are traps. But if I'm operating from your own knowledge bank, I will know which one is a trap and which one is a possibility. So he said, what? Shall I what? Pursue. He said, okay, you have clearance. It's all right. Shall I overtake them? Now, that's another question. This question is an ability question. It's a power question. Will I have the capacity to subdue them? It's a power question. So we see two Two manifestations of insufficiency here. Knowledge and ability. The first one we saw is what? Control of the future. In this scripture we are seeing two. You don't have sufficient knowledge to pro prosecute your destiny. If God doesn't help you, your choices will become your prison. Hallelujah. And I, I assure you, no matter how meticulous how humble, how patient you are, you will still make decisions that will end up becoming your barricade because of your insufficiency. And so David will not make any move until he has consulted from God. So we see there's an ab ability deficiency. There's also a knowledge deficiency. And there is also... An insufficiency with respect to the ability to control the future. Have you gotten that? Now, we can go to other scriptures, but you'll find these three basic emergencies that are associated with the limitations of humankind. Anytime you hear that people partner with satanic forces, it is because of these three emergencies. Three obvious realities of insufficiency that bedevils humankind. Now, so the kingdom of darkness is also aware that we need answers in these three basic areas. So the devil quickly decided to set up three tributaries, three specialties in the kingdom of darkness with a view to answering these basic limitations that is common to all men. First, is witchcraft. Witchcraft happens today. It's the power arm of the kingdom of darkness. It's the ability arm. You know, David said, will I overtake them? So let's take a, a quick look at the abilities that can be sourced in witchcraft and the channels through which he operates. We, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Now, this teaching I'm doing is by the instruction of God. Because there are people here that are bound God is willing to break yokes to liberate men. Hallelujah. Okay. 
witchcraft is the power arm. Is the ability arm. So people will always go to witches because of the inherent reserved power that is available in their quiver. In the book of Numbers chapter 22, I want to read to us. Numbers 22. This week has been one of the most spiritual weeks. In my own opinion, during the course of this year, this, the level of traffic, the level of commerce, the level of exchange that has taken place in the spirit is huge. And it's time for the people of God to be instructed in the basic things that will equip them over and above the enemy. In the book of Numbers chapter 22, from verse 5, oh my, I don't want to do long, long, long readings here. 5, he sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Petor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. Ah, I can't see. This young. I think I need to go back to my own Bible. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me come now therefore i pray thee and curse me this people this is a contract what is a contract somebody's being hired to do what to curse whereas an evangelist is is brought into a city for the proclamation to advertise a product to advertise jesus and in that advertisement him that is being advertised manifests himself with signs and with wonders because the kingdom of God is not in the world. So beyond the voice of the preacher, everybody has an opportunity in a, in a genuine evangelical ministry to have a touch from the one whose name has been invoked. Hallelujah. But this contract is a different contract. He was being, what? Hired to, to do what? To curse. Ah, I've not finished. He say, he say, he say. Now come, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, these people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure, I shall prevail that we may smite them. It is indicative. It is therefore conclusive that a man that is cursed will be defeated in the day of battle. Now the cause will not be obvious until battle comes <laughs> when battle comes then you know who is free and who is bound the last exam you failed might be a revelation of the state of things hallelujah oh because it's on the in the day of battle he said, come curse them. Just come. When you finish the cursing, you go back home. Peradventure. I will prevail over them in battle. Now, so, you see, the witchcraft, the witchcraft uses, is, is a power arm. And if you contract witchcraft, there are two major, two major outlets for affliction. And the first is curses what are curses is a vehicle of supernatural power just like blessings too 
a vehicle of what? Supernatural power. A blessing is uttered, is is uttered, all right? But it's not the utterance that is the thing, it's the spirit that backs it up. A curse is also uttered. But it's not the utterance that makes it powerful, it's the spirit that what? That backs it up. For Balaam, Balaam, it was known concerning him that whosoever he curses is what? Is God. That means Balaam might pray, his prayers may not be answered. But if he curses you, his area of proficiency <laughs> is in the area of what? Of cursing. Yes. Meanwhile, you will not know there is a cause in view until there is what? A battle. Like I said, the curse is it's a vehicle of supernatural power. It's a bringer of reproach. And for people that have spiritual eyes, when someone is cursed, you can smell it like a perfume. A perfume that has terrible odor. You can smell it. And if somebody that is blessed, you can still smell it too. It's like a perfume that has wonderful odor. Do you remember when, when um, Jacob disguised as Esau, he disguised. And he came to his father for blessing. And his father did carnal tests to check if it was really the right person. And according to his test instrument, he was satisfied. Notice what he said. He said, my son smells like a field that the Lord has what? Blessed. That's how blessing is in the spirit. like a perfume. If a spiritual man smells your atmosphere, you will know whether you will pass, you will be given the job before you go for the interview. Because in blessing, you are empowered to succeed and in cursing, you will fail in the day of contest and competition, the day of battle. I'd like you to understand the contract. And the reason why it was Balaam that was contracted was because he, he came highly recommended as one that if he causes the cause will rest. So it was that recommendation that was the basis of his being contracted. Such is the power of a witch, a warlock, a wizard. It is through curses and spells that their power is released. I need to tell you a bit about spells. Spells. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Oh, most of you that I hope you know now they teach spells how to do spells in even in nursery school witchcraft is becoming yes it's it's it's, it's in south africa witchcraft you can study it to university how to make potions how to make spells and surprisingly there is a very vast literary documentation of witchcraft from the ages past. And currently there's been a revival of witchcraft. If you check all the indices across the nations of the world, you might find out, in my own humble opinion, and probably you might sustain that view. Oh, people are hearing us online. I can't. Ah. Oh, let's leave it. Let's leave it. All right. Hallelujah. We can avoid that. So witchcraft is the power, and the two channels from whence 
witchcraft power is released is curses and spells. We, 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 during the last International Eagles Conference, we had um, an ordination service. Do you still remember? Yes. Esti, is that when you were ordained? Good. As we were pouring oil on all of you. So I poured oil on one of you. Name withheld. This, are you here? Now, this guy in the entire clan is the only one that is doing well financially. So one of his uncles went to a shrine and contracted a warlock. A warlock is a male witch. All right? Not just a male witch in, in terms of just male, because we have wizard. But a warlock has mentored many wizards. Because of this service, a war, the warlock has done to Satan. Satan gives him a particular ability where space will no longer be a hindrance to him. Like two warlocks in different in Guma and in Naka can smoke the great and give to another one. Space. Are you? Well, okay. The Lord will help. The See, we, we, you, we need education. Hmm? That's why we are doing what we are doing. This is not an attempt to exalt the devil. But if you are ignorant of these devices, you will fail in battle. And as you can see, I don't have any other text other than the Bible to instruct us on this matter. So that guy is a warlock. We, we know the, match, the kind of bondages that warlocks can place on men is different from wizards. The uncle visited that warlock. And the guy now, his prayer was that the, the warlock should make the family turn against that guy so that the guy will favor him. So at this moment, Give me his picture. And I, you put it on the shrine. Made a few incantations and sent demons. The way they hated that guy, they hated him with passion. You, you, can't, you can't imagine the things I hear on the phone. That's why I don't like picking calls anymore. I hear terrible news. Sometimes, after hearing some news, I need to go and check the Bible to see, to understand the news. Unfortunately for the family, unfortunately, the first ordination we did for the guy, the family came. So I called all of them and warned them. You see that oil that came on that young man? It will fight anybody that fights him. I just warned the whole family. Then they left so when we observed his life and we saw that he was matured enough to be a reverend, we ordained him with you. The moment we poured oil on him, I know you won't believe this part. His picture in that shrine began to speak. I can't stay here again. I can't stay here again can stay again. And normally, if a warlock's spell is to be reversed, the same way the spell was made, that's the same way, is the same way you won't do it. So you call the person that brought the picture, and then the person will go to the shrine and remove the picture. Because the warlock doesn't want to die. So he transferred. It's a contract. It's a Do you know the implication of removing the picture? No, you don't know. 
The demon that was doing that thing will come back and hang on your head. There's only one way to release that demon. You go back to the family that you have afflicted and you tell them that, forgive me, forgive me. How many of you have seen that before? Somebody just came out of the blues asking for forgiveness. You went somewhere and a greater power subdued the spell of the whole lock. So the whole process must be reversed. So he went and was saying that. So the guy we ordained here now said, as far as I'm concerned, his father was there, his mother was there, everybody was there. You have not done anything. But if you are saying you did something, Hallelujah. And a strange story began to come out. When he traced the story, the guy told, it was the day of ordination. When oil, a picture, began to speak. I came to tell you that there are several families here, the division you people are suffering is not because there's a quarrel. A warlock has, has placed this spell. And uh, God will help us tonight. Hallelujah. Number two. So we say witchcraft is the power arm. Divination is the knowledge arm. Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 17. Quickly. Acts 16, 16 to 17. Kaboli Amahaita. Who is helping with, me, with that scripture? And it came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. The scope of soothsaying is information and prediction. Do you realize that the Bible says that this lady brought her master's great gain? Are you with me? Great gain by her soothsaying. So if somebody dies and you want to find out who killed the person, they go to this lady. And through divination, she can get additional insight that normal people cannot stumble upon. Do they check who killed who in Buruku? If somebody dies, do they have, know how to consult? That's divination. That's divination. My mother and uh, my neighbor's child died. I, I had to go visit him. I said, I know you may have the intention to go and consult. But this time, don't consult. If you consult, somebody will die again. So that was my my counsel. Hallelujah. So that's divination. Now, are you still here? Check that scripture. Acts 16.16. 16. If you have an electronic Bible that has linguistic foundations, click on divination. What you find in, in Greek is... Hallelujah. you find what? Python. Notice that Jesus said you will trample on snake. When he spoke about snake, he was talking about divination. And that's Python. Because in the dark world, the snake is considered wise. And so, are you here? Maybe in cities like Abuja, Port Harcourt, Lagos, when you see these prophets that these fake prophets that can tell you 
you, you are from this village, you are this, this. I'm not saying that someone with the anointing can't do that, but most often, people that do that are not doing it with the anointing. And one of the ways to know is to check the person's life. Check the person's life. Because if you are drawing it from Python, you will be very, very sexually immoral. So if you check the person's life and you see that the person is not sexually pure, the source is Python. Are you with me? Now, um, 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 so the person comes, tells you, this is, your name is this, or this, 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 this. Sometimes I call names myself. Yes. So I'm not saying that God cannot do that. I'm saying that before you believe a prophet, be sure that he is a sexually pure man. Because Python too can produce, is the closest relative in the satanic kingdom to prophetic manifestations. And it can produce similar results. My friend went to Apo mechanic village to repair his vehicle. And a young boy came and asked him, are you a pastor? He didn't answer him. Are you a pastor? So he now got angry. I said, okay, I'm a pastor. What's the problem? The guy said, it's his father that does charm for pastors. So pastors are his customers. He's looking for customers for the, for the father. He's looking for customers. He's a marketer. And pastors... What does he have to offer? Divination. Python. Because in the final ritual of giving you those abilities, you and Python will have to sleep in the same room for three nights. Yes. Because the gateway to satanic supernatural knowledge, according to... Ah, I don't want to... Oh my God. Hi. I resist the temptation. All I can say is... The snake is considered wise. It is that affinity with the serpent that creates an enlarged, insatiable sexual appetite. He who will begin to come, that is in your numbers, because the clarity of the ah is divination. The way to know a diviner is to check his life. He needs an altar. Are you with me? An altar of immorality is required to power it. So what that guy was marketing was marketing for the altar of divination. And in these days of sharp sharp ministry ministry of results they have found pastors to be better customers than politicians so he kept his son in the mechanic village if he sees you looking pious sanctimonious sacramental you are likely to be a pastor and that's a would-be customer for his father now so divination is the knowledge arm knowledge now. I need to say something about divination. What makes it work? Everyone that operates by divination has a familiar spirit attached to him. We went for Bible study in Lagos. You know, we just started the uh, Lagos branch has been running Bible study in Pastor Austin's house. So the number of the people grew so large and then they went and rented a place for Bible study and they waited for me to come so that I would be the first teacher before they start Bible study outside the place. So we now had to stay back on Monday. After the Bible study, we we're greeting people and me and my wife were going out. We we're greeting people. Then I saw a dancer sitting down. She was backing me. 
So normally I touch the person to shake. Then I saw the eyes. Bite on. So I, she began to manifest. Hallelujah. You can't miss it. If you, well, I won't go into detail. <laughs> if only ministers were here, I can go into details. And I think for next year, we need to be holding retreats so that we can talk to ourselves. Fight. Meanwhile, for about one year, that lady has been prophesying to people, bringing solution to people, bringing answers to their questions. She, she has mingled into the body of Christ. She's accepted as a great power of God. Right. But when I saw her eyes, I said, so you're hiding here? She just turned like this. And the spirits refused to come out. Said, but you know you know me. Yes, that was how the spirit came out. You know me. So she lost the powers to bring solution to problem. Divination is the knowledge and the familiar spirit is attached to anyone that practices divination. And I know that by first Samuel chapter twenty eight, verse three to seven. Hallelujah. First Samuel 28 verse 3 to 7. Now Samuel was dead and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah. Even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Next verse. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shulem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and pitched, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither in dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. If you find yourself in this state, you are in a state of emergency. It means that your receptacles are not functional. Because God refused to speak to him by dreams. And the priests that were located to his voyage, the Urim refused to communicate. And the prophets that were part of his, his, his Calvary, they had no access to God again. All the receptacles were shut down. If you find yourself in this state, it's a state of emergency. You see, it means there is a challenge and you need to shut down. That's when you need to take leave. Apply for leave. Leave your office and go on a repentance plea before the Lord. Humble yourself with fasting. It's a state. If you find yourself in that state, you can die anyhow. Next verse. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has a what? A familiar spirit. Say, okay, if God is no longer speaking, there is an alternative. We can access the knowledge bank of the kingdom of darkness temporarily to give us insight. They don't need fasting for their own to walk. They don't need prayer for their own to walk. The fasting is too much. So let's go and consult quietly. Hallelujah. A woman that has what? A familiar spirit. What is a familiar spirit? Who can help us? A familiar spirit. Okay, you don't know what a familiar spirit is? Nobody in the congregation has an idea. Alright. Now, it is divination. How many of you here, someone read your palm before? Palm reading to tell you your future. Huh? Are you afraid? 
you are cursed. If your palm was red, it means you consulted a diviner. Because one of the, the ways through which divination can, can, they can read, tell your future is through palm reading. Hallelujah. One of our brethren here, he came to visit me. He said um, that in the village they brought a woman that was reading palms and giving prophecies. And then he mentioned the name of somebody here that death is coming or something. Huh? <laughs> so when I saw the person, I said, I heard the news that, that the woman called your name. Have you? Go and sleep. Thank God you didn't go to consult the woman. She called your name. Satan has a prophecy for all of us. He has a prediction for you. He has an utterance for you. Oh, you have not done deliverance long enough. When you begin to cast out devils, then the person you are casting out devils from, the spirit takes over the person's vocal cord. And it begins to prophesy to you. Say, I'm seeing you. So that thing the person wants to say is the devil's prophecy for me. I, I, Jesus never ever wanted Satan to speak. But these days we watch it on TV when people want to do deliverance, they say, Okay, where are you from? You are from here, yeah, okay, why did you come and all of that? So you 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 can actually believe a demon. And the Bible says that when Satan speaks, he lies as his native language. Nobody knows what a familiar spirit is. Ah. Okay, we'll keep that till tomorrow morning. The third arm, which is the wisdom arm of the kingdom of darkness, is what we call sorcery. Witchcraft is the power arm operating through spells and curses. Divination is the knowledge arm operating to through palm readings, woody boards, all kinds of through um, divining. Are you with me? In divination, some kind of okay. Tomorrow, that's for tomorrow morning. Now, sorcery is the wisdom arm. So somebody comes and says, I want to get married. You want to get married? Oh my God, what you need is a love portion. So they put the wisdom of, of darkness to work and give you a love portion and give you elaborate instructions on what should be done in order for the portion to work. So you will notice that there is an elaborate undertone of mystery that is attached when sorcery is at work because what the person is doing is implementing secrets that demons reveal do this do this do this there, there are always instructions meanwhile there's an appetite there is a lust of the fallen man to want to have control over his future and so the devil mounts his boot at that particular intention, that lust, and he gives him sorcery as one of the avenues to solve his limitation and his craving. Sorcery uses satanic wisdom, which is mystery. It's not something you can learn in a library or find in a book. These, these are dimensions of wisdom that are taught by devils. 
I remember I met one guy, he was in um, Lafia, huh? no, Zaria. We were ministering in Zaria, and God's hand came down so strong. And after the service, the guy came and said, I can't help him. I said, Okay, what's the problem? So when he was in the village, he was going to the stream to fetch water. When he got to the stream, he found out he was the only one by the stream. It jumped out of the water and suspended in the air and told him that they have been looking for him for many days. They want to give him wisdom with which he could help the community. And they asked him if he wanted the wisdom. He said yes. Then they gave him pepper, alligator pepper, to take three, three strands of pepper so that he could move high, you know, a bit high so that he will leave ground level he will enter the realm hallelujah told him how to construct a shrine a shrine in the image of the dimension in which the spirit operates in the supernatural and when you construct that shrine you will use these words which are incantations to give instructions to demons and that demon will appear physically right from that point the guy began to give people solution all he needed to do was to summon the spirit the spirit will examine the case and then give him wisdom sorcery works by what wisdom so i said witchcraft is what is the power arm, divination is the knowledge arm, and sorcery is what is the wisdom. These are the three major faculties of the kingdom of darkness. As we go on in the teaching, you are going to find out by tomorrow that there are other, there are, witchcraft has many departments, but these are the three broad faculties. What exactly, in order for us to move now, I want to take witchcraft, I want to isolate witchcraft, and let's deal with it um, quite extensively. Before we eventually talk about how to address witchcraft situations, address situations that are um, caused by divination, address circumstances that are caused by sorcery, how do we deal with them? All right. You notice that God, when He created man, hallelujah, He created man as a being of dominion. And it happens to be that the authority of God, we can only wield the authority of God if we are subject to God. But what Adam did in the garden was that he declared independence from God. So God was withdrawn from him. But unfortunately for him, he still had the urge to dominate. And that urge to dominate was still retained in him. And that is the basis of his fraternity with the falling angelic ranks. So there are two things. There's a major bold word I need to unveil today. Which is the word, the operating word for witchcraft. That word is called rebel. 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 If you find rebellion, look around it, you will see witchcraft. If you find witchcraft, don't look too far, you will find rebellion. Are you with me? We have the fallen man is a rebel. I hope you you, you already know that. Alright, so if we go to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Uh, I, I guess verse 19 is it 19 Galatians 5 19 and 20 you are going to see that witchcraft is one of the propensities of the fallen man so your small little child knows that if you ask him for biscuit or if he asks you for biscuit you will not give him but if visitors are there and he asks you for biscuits, you will be 